UNWA's Director of Planning, Sam Rose, joins us now live from Gaza uh, to give us an update on uh, the polio vaccination rollout and, importantly, uh, the impact that this strike on the school has had. Uh, Sam, good to see you. Thank you for taking the time. We've seen two deadly uh, airstrikes uh, in Gaza, importantly the one on the school, which was an important point for rolling out um, uh, polio vaccinations. Give us a sense of the impact uh, of the strike on your plans. Absolutely. Thanks for, for having me on. I mean, this school was one of 29 points uh, that we were going to use, sensors that we were going to use for the first day of the polio vaccination campaign today in four health centers across central Gaza and, and, and 25 schools. And of course, given the horrific uh tragic harrowing events of what happened overnight with reports of 22 people killed while they slept majority women and and children we've not been able to administer the the polio campaign at that school in circumstances like this and and, and you know we've had hundreds of occasions and hundreds of incidents over the past 12 months when our schools I've hit, we've got a very kind of routine mechanism for providing immediate care for those who've been affected whilst the emergency services also tend to the high numbers of casualties. So immediate human impact, obviously, uh, we just had to reorient and readjust the polio campaign, which is coming to the end of its first day today. Um, give us a sense of uh, how the, the rest of the, the polio vaccination campaign uh, is going on right now, um, how successful it will be, and now that you've lost one of the sites, um, what that means overall for ensuring uh, absolute immunity in Gaza. I mean, it makes an already more difficult effort more, more difficult, but we are confident that we will uh, be able to administer the remainder of the campaign successfully in, in central Gaza and, 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 and southern Gaza. During the hours of 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., pauses have been agreed, pauses in fighting, pauses in the issuance of evacuation orders forcing people to move. In the first round of the polio campaign, those, those pauses held, but what we saw during that campaign and what we saw so horrifically overnight, both in the school in, in Nusayrat and in a hospital courtyard in Darabella, just a few kilometers away, where again, tragically civilians died and were smothered and asphyxiated underneath plastic sheets as a result of, of military operations, is that we can vaccinate children against polio, but we can't keep them safe from everything else that's killing them right now in in gaza that's the real tragedy of all this tragedy that, that we even have to be administering a polio campaign but thanks to the professionalism of our staff of ministry staff of other staff from u.n agencies and, and ngos we are confident that the campaign in southern and central gaza will will be a, a success the north of the gaza strip unfortunately yeah. that remains too early to, to to tell certainly if the conditions that obtain right now in northern gaza are those that we're faced with next week when we're about to start it will be nigh on impossible to to administer a successful campaign up there and and, and as you rightly said if we're not able to administer uh, vaccines to enough children. We don't only impact on those children, but the overall success of the campaign is compromised, increased risk of a re-emergence and a spread of the disease inside Gaza and unfortunately elsewhere. Sam, you highlighted something really important. You, you said that you can vaccinate against polio, but you can't protect the children uh, and the civilian population against other externalities and the reality of these airstrikes. Um, you mentioned the hospital strike. Uh, we've heard from so many people on the ground and some witnesses that describe absolutely harrowing uh, aftermath um, and, and just the, the conditions. So. What, what is re required by hospitals right now medically? Because there isn't enough to treat some of the wounded after these very deadly strikes uh, in, in the matter of a day. I mean, first of all, what, what's required is for these hospitals to be protected, for their civilian character to, to be honoured, to be adhered to 
by all parties to, to, the, to the conflict. More than half of Gaza's hospitals right now are out of commission. Those that are working are only working partially. Hospital workers over, over the past 12 months, as well as, as having to deal with the most horrific of injuries that they're tending to, have also had to evacuate, have had to pack up time and time again as a result of evacuation orders, as a result of fighting in and around where they are they are working and, and, and where they are situated. That's the first thing that, that we need. Hospitals also need equipment. They need supplies. They need fuel to power the generators that, that keep the, the ventilation units going and the uh, intensive care units running so that people do not die. There was a, an evacuation of, of children from one hospital in northern Gaza to another in Gaza City a, a couple of days ago. And those children had to be transported in ambulances using manual ventilators, ventilators pumped uh, by hand in, 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 in the 21st century. So ultimately, we need protection of these facilities. We need supplies. We need the workers to be protected as well. And all this is only really going to come with a lasting and comprehensive ceasefire. Um, Sam, last uh, week the UN Commission um, released a report saying that it found war crimes and crimes against humanity in Israeli attacks on health facilities. And I wonder from your perspective, being in Gaza, doing the work on the ground, dealing with the realities of this war, whether you think the international community is going to step up uh, to, to alleviate some of the, the harsh realities that can be fixed by supplying more resources um, and frankly more food into Gaza. I mean, I'd, I'd certainly like to think so. The pressures that I'm under, that my staff, my colleagues, that health workers, that humanitarian aid workers across Gaza are under are absolutely unimaginable. If reports such as this, if commissions uh, of, of, of inquiries such as this by some of the most respected bodies in the world are not respected, are not listened to seriously, then that has impacts not just on, on, on how we work here as, as, as humanitarian workers, but how we work anywhere in any conflict around the world. If incidents can continue to occur with impunity, they will just provoke and prompt further escalations on both sides with consequences right now for the, for the people of, of Gaza, but as I say, broader consequences anywhere in the world if these frameworks, these international frameworks and legal frameworks that govern how we work, that govern the responsibility of member states of the United Nations to take action when there are allegations and concerns that they have been broken. If, 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 if those aren't working, then, then I mean, we, we, we start to lose hope and hope is the one thing we really can't afford to lose in, in Gaza right now. We've lost a lot of it, but people are continuing and will continue and we are confident and adamant that this polio campaign has to be a success. Well, Sam, we wish you all the best, you and your team, on this uh, polio vaccine rollout and um, uh, you're doing incredible work on the ground. Um, thank you so much for your time today. Sam Rose there for us.